Hey there. Welcome to Movie Duct. Today, we've got a fantastic movie lined up for you called My Lovely Liar. It's a gripping drama set in 2018, and it revolves around our main character, Soul. Now, Soul is quite an interesting character because she's known as a liar hunter. She's got this incredible ability to sniff out lies just by listening to people's answers. In the movie, Soul gets hired by a gang boss to interrogate three guys who are suspected of betraying the boss. But guess what? After hearing their replies, Soul quickly realizes that these guys are innocent. The real traitor turns out to be the boss's second in command. Talk about a twist, right? So, Soul takes matters into her own hands and orders her crew to punish the traitor. But before leaving, she makes him promise not to kill the guy. Smart move, if you ask me. On her way home, Soul spots a guy wearing the same soccer jersey as her, but he's carrying a bloody shirt. She doesn't think much of it, though. She's just happy to see people loving football in that part of the world. The next day, the second-in-command gangster from the previous night shows up at Soul's house, seeking revenge. As soon as she lays eyes on him, she bolts and manages to catch a bus to Seoul. And guess who she meets on the bus? A guy named Kim Doha. But here's the thing, he's being attacked by another passenger named Yam Ho over some family matter. Yam Ho tells Kim that his sister, who he was in a relationship with, is missing. He asks for Kim's help, but Kim refuses and even mentions that he broke up with Yam Ho's sister a few days ago. Well, that doesn't sit well with Yam Ho, and he starts throwing punches at Kim, causing a scene on the bus. But wait, there's more. Sol notices that the gangster who's after her is about to board the same bus. So, she steps in and kicks Yam Ho off the bus, telling him that he's Kim's new girlfriend. While riding the bus, he confronts Kim about why he didn't defend himself despite being innocent. Kim dismisses his questions, claiming that she knows nothing about him and his personal matters. However, he reveals himself as the deceitful hunter by presenting her with his card, but Kim pays no attention to him. Fast forward to 2023, he finds himself in a luxurious car driven by his assistant Chi Hoon on his way to meet a wealthy client named Ji Hai. Ji Hai has hired him to determine if her new love interest, Ji Won, truly loves her or is only interested in her money. During their lunch meeting, he begins to question Ji Won about his intentions for entering a relationship with Ji Hai. He discovers that Ji Won initially pursued the relationship for financial gain, but gradually developed genuine feelings for her. However, when Ji Hai's maid arrives to serve drinks, he uncovers Ji Won's affair with the maid and their impending child. He exposes this revelation to Ji Hai, leaving her heartbroken but still willing to pay for his services. On their way back with Chi Hoon, he explains that she raises her fees to support her employees and cover her living expenses, rather than being driven by greed. Chi Hoon suggests that she offer new services to her clients, but she declines the idea. She avoids participating in rituals because she believes her unique ability to detect lies, which manifests as a loud sound, may be connected to a ritual her mother performed while pregnant. In a surprising flashback, we witness her mother praying to various gods from different religions, hoping for her child to possess a special ability and live a happy life. Although she initially dislikes her power, she eventually realizes that she can utilize it to earn a living during high school. After deciding to become a hunter of liars instead of a prosecutor, she created a successful brand as a shaman who could detect lies. However, she could only uncover lies when hearing them in person. So, she had to travel to her clients personally. In one instance, she was in the car with Chi Hoon who was excited about an award show he was attending. He talked about Kim Do Ha, a famous songwriter who never showed his face even in Zoom meetings. Meanwhile, Kim was driving nervously at night wearing a mask and ignoring calls from a famous singer. He got anxious when asked to take an alcohol breathalyzer test at a police checkpoint and had to open his mask. Luckily, he managed to escape when another car hit an officer on duty. After this, Kim went to a secluded spot, 
but his secret of not being comfortable in revealing his face in public remained unknown. At the awards show, Sean performed and Kim won the Best Composer Award. Cheyenne collected the award on Kim's behalf and expected to hand it over in person at the after party. People asked Sean about Kim, and Yak Chen, the CEO of the agency with whom Kim was working, helped handle inquiries. Later, Mr. Park, another songwriter, claimed that Kim copied his song and demanded a personal meeting. However, Dayak Chan denied his accusation and took him to the side for a talk. In the next scene, Zian visited Kim's apartment and handed him his trophy. She even tried to flirt with him, but Kim showed no interest in her and asked her to leave. After taking his anxiety medication, he has a nightmare about murdering a girl. The next day, Cassandra, his employee, warmly welcomes a new client at her tarot shop and arranges a secret meeting with Seoul. Meanwhile, Jeff Chan urgently tries to warn Kim not to go home, but he doesn't see the messages. When Kim arrives outside his apartment, a reporter unexpectedly confronts him, triggering his anxiety and causing him to rush back to his apartment. Later, Duck Chan arrives and kindly suggests that Kim move to his secret house, and Kim eventually agrees. The next morning, posters of a masked criminal are seen all over town, and people anxiously hope he'll be caught. Kim confides in Cassandra about an incident with a pervert, and she compassionately gives him a protection charm, a pepper spray. The scene then shifts to a late-night shopkeeper's cooperative meeting at a nearby bar, and Kim hesitates about attending. Eventually, she gathers the courage and joins other shop owners. At the same time, Kim discreetly wears a mask and walks towards the new house. Sol He's group passionately discusses the masked pervert issue, and at the same time, Cassandra is unexpectedly attacked by one. Bureau bravely catches a masked man he believes is the culprit, but it turns out to be Kim, who recognizes his soul. Fortunately, Sol He fiercely defends Kim and prevents Chorik from unmasking him, firmly asserting his innocence. Cassandra also intervenes and reveals that she mistakenly sprayed her perfume instead of pepper spray on the pervert and can't smell her scent on Kim, completely exonerating him. Obik, who has a keen sense of smell, then skillfully helps identify the real culprit by sniffing everyone in the crowd. Soon, they astutely discover the culprit wearing a two-sided hoodie and desperately trying to blend in. Cassandra takes control of the situation and manages to get him arrested. She focuses on the captured culprit, Sol, and informs Kim that she can leave. When Kim asks why she helped him, Cassandra insists that she was simply telling the truth. Kim recognizes Sol from their bus trip in 2018, but it seems like she doesn't remember it now. We find out that Kim has moved to Seoul, following Jack Chan's advice, and has become Seoul's neighbor. Meanwhile, Seoul ponders Kim's mysterious actions while wearing a mask, checking for updates on the missing person's case at Hokkien Beach next door. At the same time, Seoul helps a client avoid a land scam and uses the payment to buy a gold bar, which the client adds to her safe. Just then, she receives a notification about her monthly expenses, which frustrates her because her mother has spent a large amount on her credit card. Without wasting any time, Sol visits her mother at a restaurant where she is trying to con a doctor. He intervenes and puts a stop to her mother's scheme, refusing to pay her high monthly expenses. However, her mother is upset and defends her right to spend as she pleases, warning Sol not to interfere with her business. In an attempt to make her understand, Sol threatens to cut ties with her, but her mother calls his bluff and angrily leaves the restaurant. Sol then returns home and finds solace in postcards from her dad. Meanwhile, Jack Chan is happy to hear that Kim is enjoying her time in John Seal and promises to send her some of his belongings. Cheyenne also tries to talk to Kim, but she quickly hangs up. Jack Chan advises Cheyenne to find someone who genuinely likes her instead of pursuing him. But she firmly believes that he harbors hidden feelings for her and refuses to give up. In the next scene, Kim decides to visit a lively jazz club and takes the stage to showcase his piano skills to the captivated audience. However, things take an unexpected turn when an enthusiastic customer demands to see his face and snatches his glasses. Unfazed by the commotion, 
Kim stands his ground and refuses to comply. Later that night, as fate would have it, Kim and another individual find themselves watching their respective soccer teams play against each other from the comfort of their own rooms. Coincidentally, they both decide to order food and end up meeting at the entrance while collecting their orders. To Kim's surprise, he recognizes the person as his new neighbor. The following morning, Kim patiently waits in his car as movers prepare to bring in his belongings. Just then, Chi Hoon arrives to pick up Seoul and is immediately captivated by Kim's luxurious car. In his excitement, Chi Hoon attempts to take a photo but accidentally scratches the vehicle. Witnessing this, Kim steps out of his car, surprising Chi Hoon, and forgives him for the mishap. Seoul he finds this act of forgiveness rather peculiar, but Kim brushes it off. Meanwhile, in Seoul, Duck Chan has an encounter with Mr. Park, who was visibly upset about his behavior at the award after party. Mr. Park begins questioning the relationship between Sean and Kim and cunningly records Duck Chan admitting to their nighttime meeting. Seizing the opportunity, Mr. Park threatens to share the recording with the reporters unless he gets to meet Kim by the end of the week. In the midst of all this, Kim receives a call from his mother and decides to pay her a visit. They engage in a heartfelt conversation in his car, where she expresses her concern for his well-being and requests Sean's autograph for a potential business deal. She also takes the opportunity to remind him of their past difficulties and advises against pursuing a relationship with Sean. Kim's mother hopes that he will choose a better partner in the future and suggests having a meal together. He's at the Tarot Cafe and hires her to listen in on his meeting with Kim and let him know if he lies. He's still haunted by his sister's disappearance and gets arrested for pretending to be a cop. They take him to the police station and he's frustrated with their negligence in his sister's case. As night falls, Kim meets with Mr. Park while he eavesdrops from another room. Mr. Park accuses Kim of plagiarism, but Kim denies it vehemently. He signals to Mr. Park that Kim is telling the truth. However, he soon discovers that Mr. Park is the actual plagiarizer. After the meeting, Mr. Park is frustrated that he didn't get the information he wanted. Kim leaves and he warns Mr. Park to pay her before she exposes him. She then tells Chi Hoon that she knows Zian and Kim aren't dating, which surprises him. He asks how she found out, so she hints that she might have met Kim in person. When she gets home, she finds Kim passed out in front of their building. She examines him closely and realizes he's the mysterious Kim. She takes off his mask, but he wakes up and grabs her arm. He leaves without giving her a chance to explain. Later, Duck Chan visits Kim and tries to reassure him that she might have been trying to help when he passed out. Kim is worried that she might remember their encounter on the bus, but Duck Chan tells him not to overreact. Meanwhile, he learns that Kim is the mysterious songwriter working with Sean, but he's still confused about why he's hiding his identity. That night, Kim stays at his apartment. Unfortunately, his insomnia comes back and he struggles to sleep. The next morning, he goes to a pharmacy to buy sleep aids. When he returns to his apartment, he is surprised to find journalists waiting for another celebrity. Realizing it's too risky to stay, he decides to leave. As he's leaving, he sees Kim arriving but notices that she's trying to hide her identity. She apologizes to him about the mask incident and explains that she was worried about him. Kim asks if he remembers her and what he thought when he saw her face, but he still doesn't remember their past encounter. She only tells him that he's handsome but not her type. While they're chatting, a man approaches them claiming to have lost his phone and needing to make an urgent call. He senses that the man is telling the truth and lends him her phone. Kim has no idea about Seoul he being a lie hunter, so he tries to warn her about potential con artists. However, she insists that the man is honest. Kim starts to wonder why Seoul he is so trusting, but she clarifies that she trusts no one. The next day, Seoul he's mom, Hyang Suk, sends her daughter a picture pretending to be in line for food donations. Seeing this, Sol he calls her mom but is determined not to fall for her tricks this time and refuses to help until her mom proves she's telling the truth. 
Meanwhile, Jet Chan's brother, Jay Chan, who also works for the company, confronts him about a reduced paycheck. Dick Chen explains that he cut the funds Jay Chan misappropriated from the company and warns him to stop getting involved in failed businesses. Right then, Duck Chen receives a call and momentarily leaves his brother Jay Chan alone, during which Jay Chan steals his car keys. He checks the car's history and discovers that Duck Chan frequently visited a neighborhood in Yangtzeo. Jay Chan then decides to trade this information with Sean in exchange for her promoting his burger restaurant. In the following scene, Haiyang Suk mistakenly arrives outside Kim's apartment, assuming it to be her daughter's, and through her notes, asks for money. Luckily, Seoul arrives just in time and a heated argument between her and her mother breaks out. Hyung Suk tries to fake having vocal cord nodules, but Seoul sees right through her act. They argue back and forth until Seoul finally gives her mother some money to leave that night. As fate would have it, Seoul and Kim happen to be standing on their balconies and Seoul apologizes for her mother's behavior, opening up about their strained relationship. Kim understands her situation and shares his own family issues, offering her some comfort. The next day, they run into each other in the elevator and Kim overhears Seoul talking about a blind date with her client, leading him to mistakenly think she's in a relationship. He decides to stop by the Tarot Cafe and talks to Cassandra about a man she saw earlier, not realizing it was Detective Lee Gong Min later that evening, Seoul meets a female client and her fiancé. Suspecting that the guy is lying, after observing their interaction, Seoul confirms her suspicions and advises her client to end the relationship. However, the client refuses to give up. This conversation makes Seoul reflect on her past relationship with Gong Min, remembering their love and why it ended. Feeling sad, Seoul goes to a bar to drink and coincidentally runs into Ji Hoon, the man who had an affair with her girlfriend's maid. Ji Hoon confronts Seoul, blaming her for ruining his life. Fortunately, Kim is also at the bar playing the piano for the crowd and notices Soul in trouble. He steps in to protect her, but in his haste, forgets to put on his mask, revealing his face to Soul. Kim then drives the intoxicated Soul home and notices her enjoying the music and acting cute. They end up having a meal at a restaurant, with Soul playfully teasing him and questioning why he isolates himself. She also suggests that he can relax around her and assures him that people are too busy with their own lives to care about him as much as he thinks. Meanwhile, Cheyenne is driving around Yanchio's neighborhood in search of Kim's apartment. After a while, Kim drops Seoul off at the parking gate of their apartment building, completely oblivious to the fact that paparazzi were tailing her. As she moved forward to park the car, Seoul noticed two reporters outside the apartment and immediately suspected that they were paparazzi searching for Kim. In a desperate attempt to divert their attention, he rushed towards Kim in the last moment and called himself her boyfriend, blocking the paparazzi cameras. 